Next, we define the moment generating function. This is um, denoted by m sub uh, x or m uh, subscript the random variable name. And again, the parameter is s. And this is defined as the expected value of the function e to the power s times x. Um, but you see here, um, in contrast to the Laplace transform, we do not have um, uh, uh, a condition that the distribution be one-sided. So you see here we have the integration from minus infinity to plus infinity, so the entire real line. So this is defined for uh, all distributions. Uh, for discrete case, uh, we have this, e to the power sk times the PMF. And for continuous distributions, we have integral of e to the power sx times the PDF over the entire real line. Okay, so th this is similar to the Laplace transform, but of course it has certain differences. As I said, uh, these transforms, they all resemble each other in some way, but they have uh, certain uh, distinctions, which makes them easier for certain cases. So if, if, if it is suitable, you pick one. If it is not, you pick the other to compute the moments uh, you require. Okay. Um, it resembles the Laplace transform, but of course you have to notice the difference between the two. You do not have a minus S here and the domain is different. Okay, um, as the name suggests, moment generating function generates the moments. If you just look at the definition, uh, apply the same methods we used before, just plug in the Taylor series expansion of the exponential function and arrange it maybe exchange integration and summation, etc. And what you will obtain is to, to get the nth moment, you differentiate the moment generating function n times and evaluate it at zero, okay? Uh, so it's easier to use uh, than the, the others uh, if you are after the moments, but what is the catch? The catch is um, the moment generating function may not be defined or it, it, it may not exist for all distributions, okay? For characteristic function, and if, if, if the uh, distribution is one-sided for the Laplace transform, the, it always exists. So the characteristic function of a distribution always exists, but the moment generating function may not exist, okay? So that's the problem with moment generating functions. If you have it, great. If, if not, um, you will have to do, use something else. Um, what about probability generating functions? Um, as the name suggests, using probability generating functions, obtaining probabilities, or rather the PMF of a discrete distribution is easier with respect to the moment. So here uh, we have the definition. This is the notation we use, G sub X of Z. This is a, um, uh, function of uh, the parameter z, and uh, it's in fact uh, z transform in the discrete domain of the PMF where the parameter is inverted. A little bit similar to characteristic function. Um, it's not the uh, Fourier transform here, but it's the z transform that we use in discrete domains. And by definition, the gen uh, probability generating function is the expected value of the function z to the power x. Okay, z is the parameter, x is the random variable. So by definition, uh, this is equal to this sum, z to the power k, weighted by the PMF value at k, and uh, summed up for all possible k values. And here we assume that usually we use generating functions with um, non-negative integer valued distributions, okay? non-negative integer valued random variable. It's a discrete random variable, but uh, it's non-negative and it takes values only in, let's say natural numbers, zero, one, two, three, uh, ad infinitum. So what you get is if you expand the sum, you get uh, the PMF value at zero times Z to the power zero, plus PMF value at one times Z to the power one, plus PMF value at two times Z to the power two and so forth. Okay, therefore, how do you obtain the PMF from the probability generating function? Obviously, 
if you evaluate it at zero, z equals zero, you see all these terms, all of these will vanish because they have z terms in them. So they will be zero. The only thing that remains is the PMF value at zero, okay? And then if you differentiate it once, okay, you will have the PMF value at one because this z will be gone. And these remaining terms will be function of z, okay? It will be like two times PMF value at two times z plus three times PMF value at three times z square and so on. And uh, that means when you plug in z equals zero, those terms will all vanish, okay? This will be gone. So you differentiate this function with respect to z, evaluate it at zero, you will get uh, the PMF value at one. Similarly, differentiate it twice, okay? You get this, uh, evaluate it at, equal, at z equal to zero, so this term vanishes. And to account for this, you get uh, one half uh, this quantity equal to PMF value at two. So in general, you differentiate it K times, okay? You get this K factorial times the PMF value at K plus a function of Z, okay? Each term will have Z, Z square or Z cube or something in Z. So when you evaluate that Z equals zero, this will go and therefore you will have uh, the PMF value at K equal to this value here.